<laughs> All right, hello everyone. Uh, so, have you ever tried to explain to your grandmother what your job title is? No one? Raise your hands. Well, quite a few people actually, yeah. <laughs> so, I did try to explain what an architectural visualizer uh, was to my grandmother. And I, honestly, I thought that she understood. And she said, okay, finally, you know, I'm not in architecture. Well, I have a degree in architecture, but it's not really the same thing. And uh, one day she comes back from one of her, you know, meeting with her 80-year-old friends. And she says, oh, yeah, you know, one of my friends today asked me what you were doing uh, for, a, for a living. And I said, oh, yeah, great. That's my, <laughs> my chance. Uh, I said, oh, yeah, so what, what did you do to reply, Grandma? I said, I said that you do fantasy projects. <laughs> okay, uh, that didn't go very well. Anyway, uh, how did I end up doing this uh, fantasy project? So when I was in, I think, um, sec secondary school, I, um, I got from my teachers to do an essay. And the theme was, so basically I had to go back to my parents and I had to um, ask them what they wanted me to become when I, uh, when I was an adult. So, you know, ask, oh, so dad, mom, what do you want me to become? And then I will write an essay about it. So all the other um, kids and, uh, from, from my class, they, all the other parents, they were saying, oh yeah, I want my kid to become whatever he or she wants to become, which is, you know, very poetic. Um, my dad uh, said, I want her to become either a doctor or an engineer or join the Italian Navy. And yeah, so you know, you can imagine me in the Italian Navy, um, that you know, it's not really the best idea ever. Uh, so I wasn't really attracted to any of these options. You know, I know that you need a doctor in the family because of obvious reasons, and you need you know, an engineer. My dad is an engineer, unfortunately. Um, and then, no, they sound maybe definitely nothing. So I said, fine, I will uh, decide, you know, I'm deciding to study architecture. And it was kind of still acceptable if you, you know, don't consider the fact that basically you end up not getting paid at the end of the month, but it's fine. Um, but, well, you know, it was still acceptable. And I studied in one of the most beautiful uh, cities in the world, uh, which is Florence. I'm Italian, if you don't know that. And um, I, at the end of, beginning of my um, studies, I really didn't know anything about ArcVis or anything at all. I, I used to do stuff like, you know, hand drawing my first maybe couple of years. And then at some point I decided to discover, uh, well, I discovered um, what renders are. Uh, at the time, you know, they were pretty basic. Nobody would really teach us um, anything about uh, 3D at university. Uh, but the professors would give better grades to the people who would give them, you know, better renderings. You know, pretty much like an you know, architectural competition. You have a killer rendering and you win. Well, not really all like that, but kind of. So I kind of liked getting good grades. So I said, oh, there's, you know, there's ArcVis thing, it's the right rendering, 3D, it's not that bad after all. Um, so I started to get more and more passionate about it. And I, um, I didn't really know that this could, could be a profession. Uh, I thought that this would be just something that I would do to um, help you to get a job in an architectural practice. Uh, you know, you learn a bit of 3D so that maybe uh, an old architect that doesn't know how to use 3D will you know, hire you. Uh, which, you know, back then in Italy was probably a good, a good point. Um, but uh, I, at, at some point I, decided, I said, you know, I can't be 100%, uh, like 50% architect and 50% visualizer. Maybe some people can, but I decided that that was definitely not for me. I said, I want to be 100% something. Um, so I'm, I'm really kind of into this thing, and that's the part that I really love the most. So I want to become an architectural visualizer. Uh, and the, this really the decision to become an architectural visualizer came when, I, um, when, I, uh, when one of my friends showed me a website of a 
pretty unknown um, studio in Norway, it's called Mir, and I said, Jesus, this is witchcraft. That's, that's, not, that's not possible, that this is our like, fake buildings. So I said, I'm, I don't know how, but I, I'm definitely, I definitely want to uh, uh, aim to do something, you know, if, if I get like half of as good as these amazing guys, I would definitely want to do that. So can you imagine after maybe, uh, yeah, five years of our architecture, um, my parents stretched their budget for, to, for me to, you know, to afford to go to university and study architecture. It was not the Italian Navy, but after all, it was still acceptable. Then I came back uh, to them and I say, okay, mom and dad, I, want, I don't want to become an architect anymore. I want to be a 3D artist. <laughs> so my mom cried for a week. <laughs> so, I, 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 I did steal this, this thing for, <laughs> from the internet. <laughs> and <laughs> this, is, I think this is an amazing picture. And then I said, this needs to go in my presentation. <laughs> anyway, so uh, yeah, she you know, joined a support group and I think she's fine now, but you know. Uh, my dad. <laughs> Again, like the guys in um, of pure blink today said that their dad was was not was not happy. I mean, I mean his reaction was not really pretty. But can you imagine? You know, you you go to your 55 year old dad, engineer, and and I said, oh well, I, I decided that I don't want to pursue this kind of stable, if you want to call it like that, career. Uh, and to become an artist. And uh, in Italy, if you, you know, I know that there are loads of Italian here. Raise your hands if you are Italian. Okay, so you can understand. <laughs> um, so if, in Italy, if you say that you're some kind of artist, they will probably think that you, you, know, you end up doing what this uh, job is doing here. Um, which means, you know, no salary, nothing at all, and you know, 3D artists, what the hell is a 3D artist? You know, it's, um, uh, it, it's not really something that you would, your dad would understand what it is, but anyway, um, they, uh, after all, I, with my very, very um, advanced technique of uh, persuasion, I uh, begged my, uh, my mom and my dad to sponsor um, a course in 3D, and because I knew that, I would never have the chance to do anything just on my own. I needed help. I mean, some people might do it on their own and then they have all of my uh, respect and admiration, but I, I really wanted to learn more from other people more um, expert than me. Uh, so I found this, this nice um, uh, master course uh, in Florence uh, and uh, my, my parents very uh, kindly sponsored it. Um, so after I finished this master, of course, the, uh, I had to finish my architecture, you know, my architecture university because otherwise my dad would have absolutely killed me. So I said, okay, I'm going to finish architecture. In the meantime, I'm going to do this master and I will, um, you know, I will learn and then I will decide uh, what to do. Uh, after I finished the master, the people organizing this master um, asked me to become a post-production teacher. This is because they didn't have a post-production course uh, in four archives. They had a um, um, Photoshop course, uh, but was not really the same thing. It was a bit more like, you know, how to use the tools in Photoshop, but, it, you know, applied that to uh, archives is a different fish. Um, so they said, okay, you know what, you know what, you basically uh, did some you know, self-teaching and uh, you can go and get the, you know, the, the play, the position as a post-production teacher here, which was, was, my, very, was my very, very first uh, job. I tried to do a bit of freelancing aside, but in Italy at the time, with no connection at all, that was not really easy. So that was my main source of income. It was not uh, the, you know, my dream job, but it was a job, and it helped me to get where I am here. And it was fun. I love teaching. I still teach at the Madi. Um, and hello, Fabio, where are you? Yeah? <laughs> Hi. Uh, um, <laughs> and so, 
basically, well, um, teaching was good because I could, uh, you know, could work on personal images and produce some images specifically for the course uh, so that I could get the students to go from uh, the image that you see on the left hand side to uh, the image on the, on the center and on the right hand side basically just with Photoshop. So I would get like a very, very basic um, uh, 3D scene, super, super basic. I am going to confess I'm not a 3D person at all. So I'm a Photoshop person. And I think you would notice that in my personal work still today. Uh, anyway, so this was one example. This is another example that I would do with my students. Uh, some of this stuff I still do uh, nowadays um, with, this, with my students because I think they are uh, quite effective. To, um, to teach how to get to a result with very, very little information. So if you have, uh, for example, this is very extreme um, uh, image. Uh, it is it's a very extreme example because basically it's a clay render, right? So it's very rare nowadays that a studio works like this. So you wouldn't normally now do a clay render and then add textures in post. It's not something that you do because now you have this amazing you know, software and stuff um, that do very, very cool rendering from uh, out from the frame buffer. But can you imagine what somebody could do with even a basic texture rendering if they know how to do this? So that, that's what I wanted to um, to teach to my students, uh, how do you say, like, uh, train harder and fight easier, but I don't know, something like that. Um, anyway, so this was my um, career as a post-production teacher, basically. And teaching there was also very uh, interesting and uh, important because I managed to find time to produce some of my personal images. So that my personal images or my portfolio at the time um, were uh, basically images that I was producing for the course. So these are some that I, I produced for the course uh, and then I could use also for the, um, uh, not, not these ones, these are more recent, but uh, I'm just gonna go through them fairly uh, quickly because uh, you can just go on my website and look at them if you want. Um, but I, then I will, basically focus on a couple of them and go through the process from uh, the beginning of, uh, from to the end. Um, so I want to focus a bit more on these two images for now because these are uh, the two images that really, really changed my life. It sounds a bit cheesy, but that's absolutely true. I've I told this story before. Uh, Jeff Mottel knows uh, what the, he done is done for me uh, with CG Architects and I'm gonna share this story with you all now. Um, so basically um, at the time after I thought that my portfolio was finished I started to upload some of the images online. I didn't know the CG Architect was a big thing at all at the time um, but I, that was the only thing that I knew so I said I want to have a presence online and I want to you know just start to get some feedback and so I uploaded um, these two images, I think, together with another one. So uh, it was, it really amazed me that the first image, um, uh, the, the one on the left hand side, is called Arctic, and that was selected as Pro of the Week um, in, uh, back in 2015. And then the one on the right hand side uh, got nominated in the CG Architect 3D Awards 2015. So the one on the right hand side is called Sum, um, Snow in the City, and that one uh, changed my life in, one, in a way because um, thanks to the CG Architect 3D Awards, I had the chance to meet uh, Jeff, I had the chance to meet a lot of lovely people in La Coruña when the, at the time the 3D Awards were um, celebrated. Uh, but the image that really, really changed my life is the one on the left hand side. Um, because I didn't know that when you get to do the, do, when you get to the Pro of the Week, then your image goes viral on the newsletter uh, of CG Architect. And at some point, I receive a LinkedIn message from a um, very, very unknown, another one, uh, studio um, based in uh, London, but also with other studios in the rest of the world, uh, called um, uh, D-Box. So D-Box, uh, this guy from D-Box, um, Christian, uh, he, uh, he was one of the directors of the studio in London, and 
he sent me this uh, message saying, oh, by the way, we looked at, you know, we saw your image on the CG Architect Pro of the Week, and uh, we really like it, and we would like to get in touch in case you were, uh, you were interested in a position in a studio in London. So I, honestly, I'm not even joking, I thought that was a joke, because I, I knew a few people who were absolutely able to do a joke like this. So I didn't reply to the director of Dbox for about five days. And I mean, <laughs> I, I don't know, uh, then I managed to get a job interview with them after that, but uh, that, that was absolutely awesome. Uh, and then they asked me, of course, to have a job interview via Skype, and with, like, of course, in English. Uh, they said, oh yeah, you're talking in English in front of 500 people, uh, what, what, no big deal. I said, no, not, not really. I mean, uh, <laughs> at the time, my English was not really amazing. And the longest conversation I've ever done was like five minutes. So it was a bit, you know, uh, the struggle was real. Um, but anyway, uh, at some point they asked me to uh, to talk about my portfolio, and uh, because I was so unprepared that I didn't have my portfolio just next to me, and they of course went through the first image. So the image that you um, that you see now in the on the left hand side is the first image of my um, back then portfolio, and it's called Summer in the City. The other one is called Summer is Coming. So um, at some point they started to ask me about Summer in the City, but I described Summer is Coming. So you can imagine like the face after couple, like five minutes that I was describing a completely different image <laughs> in the in a job interview. But anyway, um, I managed to get like a, a position there, a junior position there in uh, 2015, and uh, it was one of the most amazing experiences. So I, I really want to thank uh, Matthew Bannister is here. Uh, I don't know if it's uh, where, where is it, and please give him a, an applause because you know thanks to Dbox, um, I am here to talk to you right now. Um, so I spent a few amazing years at Dbox, um, and uh, what's next? Next is um, I, I moved to another really great uh, studio in London, um, it's called Cityscape Digital, and uh, some of the people are here, just in the front row. Um, and this is another uh, great experience for me. And I uh, lo absolutely loved people. I learned so much. Uh, and then, for example, uh, this, is, uh, this is a project that we've done. It's a huge project, like 60 images uh, in a development uh, in London. And they, um, basically, we wanted to... Um, to sell this project as something different. So uh, our client was a very, very big, important developer uh, in London. And of course, as you well know, all the developers, almost all of them are quite traditional, you know, blue skies and, you know, happy people, etc. cetera. Uh, so in, with this one, we really pushed the boundaries and uh, managed to get the client to agree to some moody images and uh, something uh, very exciting that uh, we worked on for about maybe six months or something. So uh, it was really, really big. Anyway, um, what I really want to talk to you about now is uh, my, per our, my personal projects. So personal project, what I do in my, uh, basically in my free time. One very important thing about personal project, and the thing, of course, that it's the, the nicest thing, is that something very big is missing. So I think you can uh, you can you know understand uh, what, what is missing here. So the client. So the client in the no one that asks you like, oh, can you please make the sky bluer? Can you please make the greenery like greener? Or can you make the shadow bright? So I, honestly, I swear that every time a client says please can you make the shadow bright, a 3D artist in the world dies. <laughs> and yeah, thank God it didn't happen to me yet. So, um, the personal projects are fun and they help you understand that you don't really have to be like rich or own the most amazing um, equipment to do uh, you know, CGI and stuff. Of course, if you have like an amazing uh, workstation, amazing camera and everything, maybe it's easier. But you don't really have to. That's what I found out. So it's like when, you know, somebody goes to the jungle just to prove themselves that they can survive just with a knife. Uh, it's pretty much the same thing. So, for example, in this case, you know, I work with a laptop 
I, at home, I don't have a workstation. I have like a very, you know, a, a decent laptop, but it's still a laptop. And I have a second-hand camera. Uh, and at the time in this picture, I didn't have, even have a tripod, so, you know, shoe boxes. Um, so I want this, um, this is the first case study that I want to show you, uh, to show you a little bit mo more about my workflow. Um, so my, this is an image that I've done for the Evermotion Challenge 2015. And uh, I'm really, really fond uh, to this image because it's the first one that I've done uh, since, uh, since I, um, I moved to London and uh, worked for D-Box. So I think that the influence uh, of D-Box really is, is present in, in, this, um, in this image uh, because of the, all the detail that went into it. Um, so first thing that I do normally, as you know, I'm sure that loads of you uh, will do as well, is trying to find uh, good references. So I, in this case, these are just a few of them, but of course I go online and download shitloads of them. Um, and uh, finding good references, of course, uh, can mean that you find reference for the uh, composition, for the lighting, for the story, and for everything else that uh, you want to show. And helps you to uh, go in, uh, in kind of a, uh, in a straight line, in a way. Um, so next step, uh, for me, is very important, is the sketching phase. Uh, once you've got like the, your key references, then I kind of choose a few, and then I do uh, a very, very quick sketch. Sketch that I, I'm saying it here, it is not like uh, a Da Vinci. It's like literally a very, very quick thing. It's for you, it's not to hang it on the wall, um, but it, it helps you to not go going straight into the 3D phase and um, uh, just place randomly a camera. Because if you go in 3D phase, place the camera randomly, and you don't really know what you're looking for, then it's, it's very hard then to get like a very nice um, and balanced composition. I mean, if you manage to do that, that's good for you. But for me, this works better, because I do all the composition phase beforehand. Um, and then also, it helps you to focus on the big picture, not on the detail, because it's very easy now just to go straight into 3D and then think of the, all the details and then maybe not think too much about the, uh, the rest. Um, so in this, um, this image was um, representing a loft. So the theme of the Evermotion competition was the loft. Uh, and I wanted this to be an art studio. Uh, of course, all the references that I uh, that I chose were references about you know what lights in art studios are and everything about art studios. I wanted to show a very specific moment uh, when a, um, a character, in this case, one of my very good friends, who voluntarily or maybe not, um, uh, decided to help me uh, and pose as a model for me. Um, and she was the artist, and she would be. Uh, in a uh, tea break, uh, so that's why the, the title, Tea Time, and she would look at the, um, at the painting, uh, which is an unfinished painting. So we don't know what the painting looks like, and she's looking at that, kind of deciding uh, if what, it, what it is that she needs, to, she needs to do to complete it. Uh, so in this image on the left hand side, you find the raw render. Uh, it was the first time that I used Corona, but it honestly it doesn't really matter to me. Um, I find you know that whatever you decide to use, uh, every tool that you decide to use, you need to use it well. Uh, but um, you, you can decide whatever it suits you really. So I, I normally use V-Ray, but I use loads of Photoshop. I, I would say that. My tool is more Photoshop than any other 3D tool uh, on the market um, because I can get basically the same result with either Corona or V-Ray. Unfortunately, I don't know anything about <laughs> other software, but um, that works for me. Uh, anyway, so that's the raw render, and then uh, I've got quite a lot of uh, post-production work um, on that. Uh, and uh, as you can see, I really enjoying, and this is the first example of this, I really enjoying to put bits of photography on the, in, the, 
in the image. Uh, again, that's something that Dbox taught me. Um, put some like f photograph, some bits and pieces, and put it in there. Uh, to me, is much better than add them in 3D because again, I'm a Photoshop person, and I love to add this level of realism in the in the image. That's uh, th that's what I really like to do, and I'm really passionate about it. Um, so, and these are some examples of what I photographed. And as you can see, nothing fancy. So no like photo studios or anything. It was literally just in the, my friend's living room, like shooting this stuff. So um, last uh, and second and last case study is uh, before you go. So before you go is a very particular, specific um, image that I've done, and I'm I'm really. Uh, happy about that because it's completely different from whatever I've done before. So that's not for Archviz, that's uh, for a poster of a theater play. So a friend of mine, Claudio, um, probably is watching me live, and hello. Um, so he, uh, he produces uh, these uh, theater plays every year, and last year um, he asked me to uh, help him with the, uh, with the poster. And I said, I mean, I'm not a graphic designer or anything, but I do renders, so that, that, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm gonna do. And uh, um, to understand this image, I need to give you a bit of a uh, story on the, um, on the play itself. So the, the story is about a couple, Anna and Max, uh, the, the people represented in this image. And they, are, um, they live in New York, and the play goes through all the stages of uh, their relationship. And Basically, uh, what happens is that at some point, and this is a spoiler, I'm sorry about that, at some point, Anna decides to leave Max, well, leave him to go and leave somewhere else um, to study. So nothing wrong about that, um, except the fact that she doesn't really tell Max. So he said, oh yeah, by the way, I found out that <laughs> you are going away and you didn't tell me. And, you know, they've been together for a while, so it's a bit of drama. And then, uh, basically, when she leaves, she doesn't really break up with him. He, she just leaves. And he's left there, not knowing what's going to happen in the future. So it's a bit of a crappy situation, you know? Uh, so I wanted to represent in this image a specific moment, a moment when Anna is uh, just a few days before uh, she leaves. And uh, we've got a lot of... Um, uh, detail that tells you that she's uh, she's about to leave, like uh, ca um, the boxes on the floor, uh, every, the, the house is me the flat is messy, um, and you know the calendar on the wall. So every single detail is uh, studied to tell Anne Max's story. Uh, of course, beforehand I read the script of the play so I could understand better what's going to happen, um, and that was really really exciting for me because it's completely different from uh, what I've done before. Um, so. The, in this case, I went um, very kind of 3D in a sense, a bit different from, uh, again, from what I've done before. Before was a bit more like all, like ba very basic 3D and then a lot of Photoshop. Um, so this, the, the room, that's the raw render, um, is, is very basic lighting, just an HDRI. Um, and then, uh, but the very important bit is, of course, uh, the, the photography of the characters. Uh, I'm afraid that I didn't model the duvet or the people. I am not as good as Cornelius, uh, but uh, yes. And so these are uh, the actual actors of the, of the play. So, of course, my friend knew them, so we, we could get in touch with them and um, we could get them to come for a, for a shooting. Um, and then, the very, very difficult thing when you work with people, uh, people in the uh, render, the interior renders, is that if you fucked it up, that's not going back. So you can't get away with it, right? So if, if it's an interior shot and you add people and they're not right, you're gonna notice that straight away. So they need to be perfect. And uh, that's why I think that was the biggest challenge for me. Because, you, you, you know, of course, without having uh, super mm, fancy equipment or, or something, you need to do with what you have. So you have 
uh, you need to find a place, in this case, that has a window, that not, not really easy in London these days. Um, then uh, you need to find a place with a kind of this bed-ish that you can move around. Um, again, in very small spaces, it's not easy. Um, and then now I, of course, had to buy a tripod at this point. Um, but it was not enough because the point of view was quite high. So we had to put it on top of a, uh, of a table. I had to go on top of a chair. And I couldn't even like look at that. I look at the picture that was taken because it was a, touching the ceiling. Um, yeah, it, it was fun. It was good fun, I have to say. Um, so we, uh, I did some testing. Some of my friends helped me. Of course, that's not my flat. Uh, they, <laughs> one of my friends uh, helped me, and uh, uh, we went to her flat. Um, and we were doing some kind of uh, testing of perspective. So I, I would say that that was the most difficult thing. Uh, because once you get like the perspective and stuff, Another quite challenging thing was to get the right um, atmosphere. So how would you feel if your partner would just, just go away, decide to go away without even discussing that with you or without even, not even breaking up with you? So I would be incredibly pissed off, I would say. So like, absolutely not cool. Uh, but yeah, we tr I tried to uh, picture in my mind every different possible scenario uh, of how these two people would interact with each other just a few days before uh, she leaves. So maybe uh, they want to um, spend a lot of time together, so they just stay awake all night and talk to each other, uh, or maybe they are both asleep and then uh, they are kind of uh, hugging each other or something. Um, maybe they argued, so uh, they are giving the back to each other. Um, or maybe like the, the, the one that we chose, um, the picture that we chose is uh, a scenario when, where she is perfectly asleep, she doesn't give a shit, and she, she you know, She's there and having a lovely time, and he's awake, and he, he really doesn't know what's going to happen, so she, he, he just lies awake in bed. Uh, so once we found this, um, this picture, and we did loads of options, so the, the, these ones were just a few of the ones that we did. Um, when we got this picture right, then putting it into the row render was was fairly straightforward because just needed to cut out. The light was pretty much done, and so it needed just a bit of retouch and great. Um, so I would say that the was not like the render part or the post-production part that in this case was challenging, was all the previous study of, of the image itself and trying to get the correct uh, mood across. So what do I want to take you away, uh, take away from uh, this talk? So, well, don't join the Italian Navy if you like rendering. That's, that's a must. And uh, personal work prevents you uh, from killing your clients because, of course, we love our clients uh, because they give us money, but we do want to kill them badly. So that's not do that. Just do personal work, and then that will help you just keep like, a bit of sanity in your mind. Um, yeah, you don't need to be rich to make Good images, I think. I'm definitely not rich. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm not saying that I do the most amazing images, but I, I like them. So I, uh, I don't think we need to be rich. It would help probably, but it's all right. And then it's a bit more a cliche uh, kind of thing, but I think it's true. Um, need to step out a bit of your know, comfort zone to always, you know, progress and um, go forward. But yeah, most of all, don't take yourself too seriously. Thank you very much. Nice, Fabio. They left me here. Nobody's here. Fabio. <laughs> I can stay here a little bit more if you want. I'm not very good in telling jokes. Okay, it's fine if I leave. Okay. Adiós.